Cato walked for a long time up and down grassy hills to look for his sister, and then once again down along the stream, but he did not see anybody. However, he could smell mice and sometimes hear squeaks coming from the bushes. His belly was empty and it began to growl. The further he walked along, the darker it became and the more his belly ached. All of a sudden, the sky flashed bright with lightning. A loud thunder burst hurt Cato's ears. He froze in his tracks, eyes wide open and black as cold. He felt the wind. Heavy raindrops fell from the sky through the trees. More bright flashes of lightning and louder thunder came as the wind howled. It felt like the stream had been swept up into the sky and then down directly onto Cato. There was a sharp crack and then a loud thud as a branch crashed to the ground a few feet away. Cato dug his claws into the dirt and began to run. He ran and ran and ran and found a dry spot near the trunk of a very tall tree. His little heart raced. Small puffs of his breath were visible when the sky lit up because it was getting cold. His fur was wet and stuck to his skin. Then a long flash of lightning and a loud thunder exploded right over the top of the tree above him. Cato ran wildly into the dark, sliding on some old leaves. He continued to slide, his wet fur showing red in a few places as Cato fell sideways into a dark hole. A rough tongue licked his fur and woke him up as he was lying in the hole. He could barely see two brown eyes set in a furry grayish-brown face with a twitching tan nose. Short brown whiskers moved up and down as a rabbit continued to wash Cato. Are you okay? asked the rabbit. Cato was surprised that he could understand the long-eared animal. The washing felt good. Cato knew that the rabbit meant no harm. He recalled seeing Mrs. Taylor chasing these animals in her garden because they ate her flowers. Where am I? asked Cato. You are in my home and you are most welcome to stay here out of the rain, said the rabbit. I'm looking for my sister, Cato said while rolling over and finally standing up. It was dark and very quiet in the rabbit hole. Cato smelled and heard another creature. He asked, Are we here alone in here? No, there is another kitten that wandered in here a few days ago. Another kitten? Where? asked Cato eagerly. The rabbit pointed with the right front paw and said, Well, right over there. Cato and the rabbit walked over to a cute little white kitten with yellow eyes that looked up and smiled. Brother, she cried. Sister, Cato replied. Kitten ran to him, wrapped her cute little pink nose on his cheek, on his neck. Cato smiled. Sister began to lick Cato's head. He purred. She curled up with her brother. They both fell sound asleep, purring, their front paws, hind legs, and tails intertwined. When they woke up, sister shared with her brother how she ended up in the rabbit hole. I was chasing mice in Mrs. Taylor's garden and wandered off too far. I could not find my way home. Later on, I ended up in the rabbit hole. By then I was starved. I had only eaten a few bugs. Sister stood up and stretched, arching her back. Then she sat down. Cato began licking her ears, after which he told her how he had ended up in a big yellow house with a little girl named Tori. Looking towards Mama Rabbit, he said, Now we must find our way home to Tori. Can you help us? Mama Rabbit came over and told the kittens, I heard from a friend that there's a big house a long walk away. 
I do not know exactly where it is. All I know is that you must cross the stream to get there. Immediately, Cato said to his sister, This could be the nice house where Tori lives. Her mama made wonderful food for everyone. He also told sister about Tori's brothers and dad, the strange Siamese cats that did not talk, and about the dogs that played tug of war in the backyard. Sister said, I saw the stream when I was lost, but I was afraid of the water. Kato replied, It was not that scary. I saw it too. Mama Rabbit said, The rain has stopped and the sun is now up. Kato and his sister thanked Mama Rabbit and left the hold. Mama Rabbit waved goodbye as the two kittens set out, tails held high, to find the house with Toy, her family, the Siamese cats, and the dogs. The kittens heard sounds of water nearby and headed down the hill towards the noise. When they got there, Kato saw that the stream was flowing much stronger now than before the storm. The stream sounded like it was in a hurry. It overflowed the sides of the bank. Cato and his sister walked up and down along the stream, but could not find a place to cross. All of a sudden, a dark shadow covered the kittens. They felt a gust of wind as a large bird flapped its wings while flying over them. The kittens watched in awe as the bird landed on a dead log. The bird tucked his speckled brown wings into the sides of his body and turned around to look directly at the kittens. He had large yellow eyes. Long tufts of dog feathers grew right out from above his eyes out to the side. They looked like ears. Opening his black beak, he said, So how are you two doing this fine sunny day? The kittens were surprised to see such a strange-looking bird standing so close to them. Sister huddled next to Cato and shivered. Cato stretched his body to its maximum height and pushed his tail until it looked like a bottle cleaner. Cato's eyes bent back. He squinted his black eyes and hissed. <sighs> he warned the bird. bird. Now, don't be scared, little one, said the bird. I mean you no harm. My mother told me to go out and fly through the forest to see if any forest creatures needed help after the storm last night. Taking in a deep breath, Cato said, What kind of animal are you? The bird puffed out his chest and said, I'm an owl growing up to be the boldest and strongest hunter of this forest. But my belly is quite full right now, so you need not be afraid that I'll eat you. I live with my mother in that green tree over there. He pointed with one of his wings to a very tall tree. Kato said to the young owl, We want to cross the stream and find the big yellow house where Tori lives with her family, the Siamese cats and the dogs. Could you help us get across the stream? The owl blinked his eyes and answered, I'll fly out to see where you can cross. After lowering his head, he leaped into the sky. The kittens ducked as he flew over their heads with wings flapping. They watched the owl fly up and up and up until they could barely see him. After a while, he came back <coughs> and dove straight down towards them through the trees. They ducked again as the owl swooped over their heads and landed back on the old dead log. The owl said to them, <coughs> You need to walk along the stream the same way as the water is flowing. After the bend, a tree has fallen across the stream, and that's where you can cross. Then follow the path on the other side and you'll find the yellow house. Thanking the owl, Cato and his sister began walking downstream, heading for the falling tree. The owl called out, Hoo 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 hoo! Leaped back into the air and disappeared from sight.